I'm a karate man, alright? Karate man rule on the inside. Hi everyone, this is Tony the Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giant Sports Talk Entertainment. I'm a karate man as well. I don't show my weakness, I bruise on the inside. Great movie. Great line, great movie. Uh, I want to talk about a couple things with the Giants today. I wasn't going to do a video, but I want to jump on the mic. We are going to have the stream tomorrow with the Dahmer at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Wanted to acknowledge the passing of Gary Brown, former Giant running back, 1,000-yard rusher for the team. Um, he lost his battle with cancer yesterday, I believe. So, I mean, that is a—I um, actually remember um, Mr. Brown. He also played over at Penn State. He had 2,000-yard season. Please, I also had one in San Diego. So good giant, good man, uh, survived by his wife, uh, Kim, and his daughters, and his two daughters and son. So we, like I said, we need to acknowledge the passing of Gary. Um, wanted to talk about the draft. Shocking, as that may seem. I saw an article the other day that a scout had come out, or uh, I forgot who, who it was, a former executive or an NFL executive said it would be malpractice if the Giants don't trade for an additional draft choice in 2023. It'd be malpractice. Dun, dun, dun. They told that this they told to the athletic Philadelphia already has an extra pick next year. They are a year ahead of Giants with a better team. Yeah, that's not wrong. <laughs> they made the playoffs. So, of course, they're better than the Giants. And this person went on. I don't think that Dan, the quarterback, Daniel Jones, can play. And instead of spending a bunch of money this year trying to look pretty, they will evaluate their own and for and go forward with that, said the evaluator. But Merritt doesn't agree with that. Merritt, of course, thinks that Jones has lots of talent. I don't know. The, the jury's out on that. But for to call it malpractice that the Giants don't get an extra pick, here's what I don't understand. This is what I don't get. We traded a pick last year. We traded basically Parsons and Justin Fields to get Kadarius Tony in the 17th pick this year. That's what we did. We could have had, we could have had, not that we were going to take Justin. I was a big, I'm still a big Justin Fields fan. I was a big Parsons fan. Everybody knows that. Um, but we traded that pick, got Kadarius Tony and moved into this round of the draft. So, which we came up with the, you know, with the seventh pick. And so many people want to just trade the pick. Let's get rid of it. Let's trade it. Let's move on from it. Let's get it. We want, we need to get a shot at Bryce Young and CJ Stroud. Not even thinking about this draft, not even thinking about the team in general. You cannot keep push. I've said this. I said this about salary cap money. You can't keep pushing the salary cap money out because sooner or later, the chickens come home to roost. And that's what they did this year. So you cannot keep pushing your salary cap, your, excuse me, your, your draft capital out to another draft because you think you may have an opportunity to get a quarterback because you think there may be a possibility that you can get a player because you think you are going to be bad enough or the team you trade enough is going to be bad enough that the pick is going to be in a higher, higher level than seven or five. These are all the things that you are risking to think you could potentially find a better pick next year. Because the only way you are going to get another draft pick next year is if you trade one of the first rounders this year. So you are devoiding yourself of a top 10 asset to potentially move the pick to somewhere else for another year where the pick may be even worse. You may, you may trade with Seattle. Seattle may ball out and you might be a 26 pick. You, you may trade with, say, I'm just picking out teams, but you may trade with Atlanta. Atlanta may play well and have a 17th pick. That's the, that's the risk that you are taking. I've said this before a million times. It's called a bird in the hand. Beats two in the bush. What that means is you have a bird in your hand. There's two in the trees. Do you take the one in your hand and throw it to the side and go chase the two in your tree and two in the tree and hope you catch both of them? No, there is talent in this draft. There is talent available in front of the Giants right now. And you can't sit there and say, we need to trade. You, you were already, you banked last year that Daniel Jones was going to fail, which is really why you made that pick, that trade. You banked on it last year and he failed. You're not picking, the Giants are not picking up to his fifth year option in May. So you're banking on again that Daniel Jones is not going to be either be your quarterback or you're going to have to end up paying him in 2023. So you're banking on the fact that he may not even be your quarterback anymore. So why not look at a quarterback in this year's draft? 
Why not package the five and seven if you really need a quarterback and move up and get and grab Malik Willis at two? On the board, the Malik Willis Express. I guess nobody saw that one coming. Or even trade seven and a second rounder and maybe an, an additional pick and, and, and get up to second or another or another spot. Why keep waiting and hoping? that the player that you want is either potentially there or doesn't pull a Tua his last season. Have an injury. Have a bad season. You are banking too much on hoping. And I love it because a lot of these fans, you say, yeah, let's do that. Why? Explain it to me. There are going to be other teams in this draft that uh, next year they're going to be looking for a quarterback. Not in 2022, but in 2023. There are going to be other teams. You don't think they're going to be trying to trade up? There's probably, hopefully, there are worse teams than worse teams than the Giants in 2022. So we're not picking in the top ten. So you really think you're going to package, hopefully, a lower a lower team pick and another pick to move up to like second or first? Do you remember what we gave up to get Eli Manning? Does anyone remember that? No. No, you don't keep just moving. I've said it before. You can't just continuously, bad teams, continuously kick the can down the road. Good teams build an organization, build a foundation, have a plan, and then move forward that way. Not just continuously saying, we're going to just keep trading back because hopefully in the year 2028, we're going to get a quarterback. It just doesn't work that way. And I, and I don't understand why so many people are on, ball, are on board with that. Look at a quarterback in this draft. They always said, I love when they, there's so many draft classes. Like, well, this is a weak quarterback draft class. And how many times have those weak quarterback draft classes produced starters? I still think you can get rid. If you're not going to go Willis, I still think you can get Ritter in the second round. I don't want Sam Howe. I don't want Carson Strong, but if you want to make a shot at, you want to take a shot at somebody, try to get Ritter in the second round by moving one of your second round picks and maybe a fourth. Do something like that, but don't just keep trying. What if both C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young get hurt next year? Knock on wood, they don't. But what happens then? Then you're going to wait till 2024. Are we just waiting till the Archie Manning draft? Maybe that's what we're doing. Maybe we should. Maybe we don't need a quarterback. I think we should just wait till the Archie Manning draft. I love it the other day because someone said to me, Daniel Jones is going to be our quarterback for the next 15 years. He's not going to be good. He's just, we're always going to be moving on from him and going somewhere else and finding someone else that we're never going to find that person. Because we have to think, and I'm, and I'm telling you right now, I'm not saying this is what Shane's doing. I'm not saying this is what Dable's doing. But I'm saying you need to think in the now. This team has been so bad for so long. You're in cat purgatory right now. You're going to be out of it next year. You have the opportunity to make a statement now and gain talent if you can clear the cap space to hold on to those five, to hold on to those two first round picks, to hold on to five and seven. And I'm saying right now, one of the reasons I think they would move into next year's draft is because of the fact that they can't find the cap space to hold on to five and seven. And again, that's a terrible way to run an organization. And we, gotta, we have to think about that. And we have to think about my favorite word, operational cap space. But don't pass on today's talent for talent that you may have an opportunity to get in 2023. And again, this is Tim with the Online Big Blue. We're the best in New York Giants sports talk entertainment. And as always, if you can like, if you subscribe, if you ring that button, you know what it means, that'd be awesome.